Now we know how linear and parabolic graphs work, we need to know how we can use them in real situations. The fun of drawing lines wears off quickly, so let's find a way we can use them in real life. Say you're organising a van for a school trip. Your school can only afford the trip if the cost of the van is less than $80. There are two companies in your town that will rent you a van. The first, Adventure Incorporated, is shown by this line. The second company, Terrible Vans Limited, is shown by this new line here. We might want to know how much each company charges us per kilometre. Remember, this is calculated from our gradient using rise of a run. The first company charges 75 cents a kilometre, while Terrible Vans Limited charges 25 cents a kilometre. So this is the better choice, right? Maybe not. In this real world example, the two companies charge different amounts. Our first company only charges per kilometre, but Terrible Vans Limited starts at $35. This is our y-intercept, it's the constant in the equation cost equals 0.25d plus 35. This means that even though the Terrible Vans are cheaper per kilometre, it's more expensive than Adventure Incorporated up until 70 kilometres at which point the costs are the same. When the two lines meet, we know that they are the same at this point. So how do we know which van we should take? Well, like a lot of things in the real world, it depends how far you're going. If our trip is 120 kilometers total, there and back, which van will get us there under our budget of $80? The only one that can make the trip are the terrible vans. Be sure to wear a seatbelt, so that's one way we can use linear graphs in real life. But what about parabolas? One of the most important skills in maths is to be able to make a model to solve a problem. This is Jake. Everyone in New Zealand likes rugby, right? Not Jake. Instead, Jake likes to kick the ball away from everyone when the ball gets near him. This kick can be modelled by a parabola. The ball reaches a maximum height of 2 metres over a fence and travels a total of 10 meters. You could be asked to find an equation for the height, h meters, of the ball above the ground at a distance, x meters, from where it was kicked. In breaking down this question, you should look out for the important factors in a parabola, the x-intercepts and the vertex or turning point. In this question, we know the vertex already. It is located at h equals 2, the maximum height j kicks the ball. We also know the parabola will be inverted, with a negative value if we think about the movement of the ball. In this example, the x-intercepts are easy to establish. Jake is at the origin, 0, 0, and therefore one of the roots is there. The other one is where the ball ends up, at x equals 10. If we put this together, we can obtain the equation h equals negative ax plus 0 times x minus 10. But this isn't our final equation. We need to adjust the steepness of the parabola so our maximum is at h equals 2. And we do this by substituting our midpoint at x equals 5, which is halfway between our x-intercepts, and our maximum, h equals 2, and solve for a. With a bit of algebra, we find a to be 2 over 25. And so our final equation is now h equals negative 2 over 25 x plus 0 times x minus 10. This is just a factorised quadratic. Things to remember. Equations can be used for real life situations. Comparing equations can give you important information. Where lines overlap, the answers are the same at that point. They're equal. Parabolas can model complex situations.